service starts at 11. We also have Wednesday night starts at 7. 7. And we're on Wednesdays at 7. Uh, glad to have our honor guests here today. Just be sure to welcome them. Uh, we have a Friendsgiving on Sunday, 11 4 10. Invite all your friends and family to wish them to enjoy and have their food, fellowship, and fun. Uh, so we'll have flyers in the back for y'all to come out. Uh, and we also have a thing to fill out. There will be on the back for all the families. Just add an update on uh, people that's here. Again, serving, uh, I need y'all to fill out a sheet if you haven't done so yet. So we'll get kind of warm and serve it. If you can't have a cab drive, make sure you bring your cans, get them tipped down. Uh, ladies fun, donate, donation will we'll be given to Karen Lott, also at the Brady Mills and City of Needs. Please let her know. Uh, prayer list, Mary Rakestraw, Brenda Morgan, Christy Tucker, Buddy Robinson, Dion Weaver, Richard Twitty, Mary Kennedy, Sherman Ballard, Amanda Locke, uh, Garrison Coates, Peter Printer, and Dean Hester. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, to serve today, we can sing with Kevin Hendricks. Opening song will be 529. Uh, serve another the Lord's Tables, Blake Dees. Michael will have the opening prayer. Junior will have the closing prayer. Also, Finn, we only get Chris Bozak. Uh, we have a birthday today, Hannah Watson. See her, her uh, if you have any more announcements, give them to me and I'll announce them in a second. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like to thank this wonderful day for coming to you share it with us. I like this opportunity we had to come together and worship you without fear of being stopped by anybody. Lord, I'd like to thank you for those that are leading today. Let their message be clear and let it stick with us. Pray that we can go throughout the day. Let them remember everything that we hear and apply it to our day to day lives. We'd like to pray for those that are sick. Let them be back in good health for long. Give us time to recover. We want to know why I'm afraid. Amen. We'll sing the first and third stanza of 529. <clears throat> Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but boldly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Oh, yeah. 
victory, I am resolved in the song of the Lord. <laughs> Good morning. It's great to see everybody out today. I'm grateful that, that uh, we're able to get come together. I appreciate uh, Michael's prayer and, and offering Thanksgiving that we are not hindered from being able to be here together. Uh, we know that uh, there's many places in the world where folks are hindered, and, and uh, we just pray that uh, that's not something that <coughs> happen here in this country. Uh, as uh, as was announced a little bit ago, we've got a couple things, three things or so we need to be filling out. I appreciate those helping us get those things together to fill out. One of them is kind of a, an update for some information, um, which includes some phone numbers, addresses, birthdays, anniversaries. Those are on the back table. Make sure you fill one of those out. A couple questions about is it okay for us to set you up in our text group, things like that. So uh, those are important to be able to do that. You would fill those out for us so we can have a update uh, list of those things. Also, uh, the men's willingness to serve. Several of you have already filled those out. If you've not, please do so. And, um, and let's have those where we're ready to go on that. There's also a uh, flyer for our upcoming Friendsgiving. That's next week. Uh, as well as uh, the flyer, as well as uh, some post on the back for those that uh, whatever you're willing to bring for that. Uh, that's going to be listed back there. If you uh, if you want to build something, you need a plan, right? Uh, we've got folks here who've uh, built houses, and some folks have, have built houses for a living here. And, and some of you may be building something right now. Would you want to build a, 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 a house without some kind of a blueprint? What would happen if you did? What would happen if you just decided you was going to put something together and, and wing it? You decided those plans really wasn't important. Maybe you watched enough HGTV that you feel like you could go ahead and just, just build that thing. Just from you off the top of your head. What would it look like? I bet it wouldn't turn out too well, would it? I, I bet you might not even want to live in it. I remember growing up, or you know, me and some of my, my family or friends would get together on a, on a, on a weekend and, and we'd try to build these little forts. Those things would be out of scraps that we had, and there really wasn't ever a plan. We might have some sticks and twigs, and it may look a little bit something like this, but it's not something you want to live in. Not really something you want to stay in. There have been more than one occasion where the top of those things kind of come crashing down. And we didn't really have a plan. We really didn't know what we was doing. So as crazy as it might seem, if you wanted to build a physical house without blueprint, Consider the folly of trying to build one's life, one's family, with no real plan, with no real blueprint. You know, a house is just a building, but a life is something much more important. Yet there's a lot of people who live their lives without following any real plan, any real blueprint. They simply kind of make it up as they go along. And, and it's so wonder then that so many people's lives are, are really kind of a train wreck. Do you know that there's a solid blueprint for your life? There's a solid blueprint that we can use to help us to make a, a better life. This morning I want us to look at Psalm 127. If you got that in your Bibles, we'll go ahead and be turning there to Psalm 127, just two verses. Two verses I want us to specifically focus on, verse 1 and 2, as we examine some principles that are listed there, that if we'll, if we'll grasp them, it'll help us to, to know what that blueprint is for our life, if we want to make it better. Let's read those first two verses together. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. God's blueprint, 
God's blueprint for life is that he must be several things that these two verses talk about. God must be, first of all, for a home to be successful, needs to be the builder of that home. Psalm 127 is not talking about a, a pounding the nails and cutting the boards or, 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 or stretching out the tape measure for one's house. But rather the psalmist is speaking about how one builds their life and how one builds their family. The psalm here, we see it in an introduction in a lot of your uh, text uh, versions of this. It says it's a psalm written by Solomon. Solomon was one of the greatest builders ever, right? He was one of the wealthiest people ever. We're going to talk about him in our second lesson too. But it's important to know that it was Solomon that wrote this song. Why? Because Solomon had a lot of issues with his own home later on in life. First Kings chapter 11 verse 14 tells us that when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods. This verse tells us that Solomon had later on built a home without having a proper blueprint. A lot of people build their houses, their homes, without a plan. And they kind of build it as they go. This is reminiscent of the book of Judges, right? Judges chapter 17 and verse 6 says that in those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own way a lot of people make their life. Doing things that they feel like's right in their own life. A lot of people putting their own thoughts into it. Building their homes with zero input from the master planner. Zero input from this blueprint that God has given for our home. And they kind of do it however they want to do it. There may be some folks that are sitting in our audience today whose lives have really been damaged. Because their home that they had, their home life was not one that had God's blueprint for it. What you see when you see God's blueprint for the home is a loving husband who laid down, would lay down his life for his wife, who would put her first and do everything in his power to show her that he loves her. What you see there in that blueprint that God's given us as a wife would be a, a woman who respects her husband and loves him. And a husband that would conduct himself in a way that he earns and deserves that respect. What you'd see is a, a, a father who would be an example to his children as to how to, uh, 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 he should be and how a father should love his children. Of how he should treat a, a wife and the children would see that and how a wife would, would love her children no matter what. This Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 and, and on tells us those kind of blueprint. We would see children who would come from this type of home and have a lot of advantage over a lot of other people. And then it's up to them to take that advantage they have and make them to be productive. Productive as citizens, productive uh, in the kingdom of God. All by following the right blueprint. We need to let God build us. We need to let God then build our homes. When one dies out to build their homes on their own, the psalmist says in verse 1 that that labor is in vain. So we see God's plan for us is to help to make him the builder of the home. He must do that. We must also let God be the protector of our homes too. Let's look back at verse 1 for this next observation. Except the Lord build the house, the labor is in vain that built it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. The watchman staying alert, and he's doing so in vain. In the days that this psalm was written here, the security of the system was a uh, city was a, a big, big, big issue. Cities were fortified with walls. They had these big entrances that were there, and they had watchmen that their duty was to guard those city gates at all costs. Wouldn't it be sad to spend your life savings building a house only to sit back and watch it be broken into or destroyed? Speaking spiritually, the life we have to uh, depend, we've got to depend on God. 
to be the protector of our home. A home security system can just do so much. A gun can just do so much. A smoke detector can help just protect so much. However, we need spiritual protection so that our spiritual lives, our spiritual homes, do not become destroyed. In life, God protects us from the destructive factors of life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 10 and verse 13. There hath no temptation. How many? No temptation. Taking you but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Not was faithful. Not could be faithful. Not has the opportunity to be faithful. He is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God offers a way of escape. How many marriages are destroyed because of the falling for the temptation of another? Life is full of all kinds of temptations and folks on our own. It's more, more perhaps than we could overcome. But God says you're not on your own. God says as his people you're not on your own. And he offers a way of escape from every temptation that we may face. But he's not going to make us go through that escape path. We have an adversary that we've got to contend with. But we don't have to contend with him alone. God is who we need to protect our homes from the attacks of the enemy. And that enemy is seeking to devour us. God gives us a blueprint for that protection. What does he say? He says, put your trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God's blueprint in life is that he must be the one that builds our home, that protects our home, and number three, that provides for our home. Let's look at verse two. Psalm 127 verse two says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sheep. What does verse 2 do for us? It, it, it tells us where to look for our provisions. It, it's, it's not against hard work. No, it's not against working. It, it's against thinking that you are the one that provides. Let me ask you a question. How many sleepless nights have you had to, in your life? When it comes to this issue of having your needs met, how am I going to do this? How am I going to pay this? How am I going to provide for this? I've had a few of those. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm doing this lesson for us today, I've had some I've had some of those sleepless nights here lately. But I know we need to trust God. That's what his word says. When we read it, but sometimes we uh, still worry. You know, here recently I've had an opportunity to, to be able to, to go into a new role, a new position, a new job. And, and, and I've been nervous about it. Because they call me up and something is a really big deal for me in life because it's my livelihood and my primary livelihood, right? And, and so they said, all right, we want to hire you. No, we're offering you this job. You've got three weeks before you want us, we want you to start with us, okay? So in the meantime, I've got to do a background check. But they've already offered. And I've already accepted. And I've had to go ahead and give the place that I was currently employed at a notice so I'm kind of in limbo what if is what goes through my mind what if now, I'm not a known felon or anything but there you never know you never know what they're going to see I, I, there's been places that I haven't worked in, in, in 25 years there's two places that I work that doesn't even exist anymore what if the corporation that they call and check on me is not even has my name on file anywhere and so all these what if scenarios go through your head what if i i don't get that other job even though they've offered it and this other place is mad at because i'm leaving and I, see where i'm going with it i need to trust god i need to understand where my patients come from they still told me to be there at eight o'clock in the morning so i'm, I'm thinking i'm still okay when I fail to 
realize who really provides for me if you give me an opportunity to really mess up my priorities. I think that's a lesson for all of us. When we decide that God is our provider, then it takes some of the worry out of things. And it also puts things in a better perspective as to what's important. Remember when Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 25, beginning, he, he spoke to the people who were really, it's what they were doing. They were worrying about their daily needs not being met, right? Remember the passage? Jesus talks about how the birds of the field are, are fed. He talks about how the fields are clothed. And, and he asked, how many can you, how many can add a, add a single cubit to their height by worrying about it? And he tells us how much more important we are than all these other things. As this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Folks, all that we have is from God. We need to make sure that we remember that. One gentleman Jesus mentioned recorded in the book of Luke, who didn't remember that, Jesus used him as an example. You may remember Luke 12, verse 16. One who was called a rich fool. It's one of the only occasions where we see God calling a man a fool. He, he warns us not to call his fellow a fool. Why would he call this man a fool? Not because he had great, gained great things. Not because he worked hard. Obviously, he did. But he called him foolish because he would not understand from where all the blessings came look down through that passage beginning in verse 16 and I've got some things underlined for us. And he thought to himself saying what shall I do because I have no room to bestow all of my fruits. So here's what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns to bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my basically this. You will either find a way or an excuse to do anything. We need to realize who's given us the things we've got. So God needs to be, as we said, He needs to be our provider. He needs to be our protector. He needs to be our builder. That's the blueprints. I think it's time for, let all, of, for all of us to let God be those things for us in our lives. This morning, we're going to sing a song of encouragement for you. I'm resolved. A resolution is something you've made up your mind that you need to do. And there may be those this morning who need to be making up their minds. Perhaps there's some that have, but had no way. They need to use God to be that blueprint for what we need to be. Let God's Word be that blueprint for our, for our home, for our lives. Believing that Jesus is that Christ. Being willing to, to repent of your sins. Confess his name before men and be immersed, to be baptized, to be put on, put on Christ in your life. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. There may be those who have obeyed the gospel. They need the prayers for changing some course in their life. For they have not let that blueprint be what it needs to be uh, that they follow. If you need to respond in any way, won't you come as we stand together and ask us I am resolved no longer to linger.
Lord's table this morning be 226. We say the first Thank you. 